Hi everyone, my name is Oscar and I'm a scientist. Today I bring to you the April 2023 Visa Bulletin update, especially when it relates to EB2NIW or EB1, those categories that we like to talk about in this channel. First of all, I should say, uh, I, I should apologize because this is the second time I'm uploading this video. And the reason is I made the previous video a little bit too fast and I made a mistake in something I said. Uh, because there is actually big change that this visa bulletin brings and I uh, overlooked because I wanted to bring you the information as fast as possible and sometimes being too fast is not too good. And thank you to, to the uh, viewer that actually warned me about this issue. And so I went back and looked at things a little bit more carefully and I'm bringing you the analysis now that you deserve. Okay, so let's take a look at the Visa Bulletin. Let's compare the month of March with the month of April and see what's going on and, and what is that big difference that I'm talking about that made me make a, a video that I was not very proud of. So let's go to my browser and here you can uh, take a look at the official website. In order to get to this official website, you always, always, always have to check official sources of information. Make sure you are in a .gov um, website, Google Visa Bulletin or Visa Bulletin USAIS and access the first link and you will see something like this. So you have March 2023 as a current Visa Bulletin and then upcoming is April. It has been showing here for the last couple of hours. So we're going to open both of them and we're going to take a look at them. But, um, and and while, while we're doing that, I'll, I'll show you what is very different for, for March. So I'm going to uh, open March and I have already April in that, um, in that tab up there. So let's see March, let's refresh our memory. We go down to employment base. This is uh, what we're looking for. And there's always two tables, table A and table B. The mistake I made in my previous video was that I went directly to table B because for the last months, that's the table we had to look at when we were evaluating the situation from the point of view of an adjustment of status. However, this is what has changed in April. So again, in, uh, in the month of March, we would go to table B, the dates for filing. And if we are unsure which table we have to look at, we have this link here that we can click and it will tell us what table we should use. And as I said, for the previous months, it has always been B dates for filing, but that has changed for April. So just a quick look at March. Priority date for most countries for EB2 was December 2022. That means that there's a little bit of a delay. It had been stuck since December, January, February, March, no movement whatsoever for most countries. China and India as usual are even worse. Uh, July 2019 for China, May 2012 for India, all other countries December 2022. And that had been frozen for a while. We were expecting that those days would start getting some traction, some movement forward. That's what we want. That's how lines get a little bit better for, for us, the applicants. And the opposite is when they go backwards and that's called retrogression. That's the, la the, least thing, uh, the, the last thing we want to see. EB1 was current for all countries except China and India that recently got retrogressed to summer of 2022. Okay, so remember to read these tables. You have to look at your priority date. That's when you file the I-140 and your date has to be previous, has, has to be before the date that the visa bulletin shows for your country of birth. So now let's go to April 2023. Okay, I already went to... Uh, employment base and here the big issue I had previously is that I was looking at table B and table B hasn't changed much it is it's pretty much the same however if we click that link that I was telling you about and we open this page that says adjustment of status filing charts from the visa bulletin here we can see that for current month and that that is March right now for employment based preference filings 
we have to use dates for filing charts. That's the table B. That, that's why I always look at B directly because that has been the case for the last months. However, if we look at next month's adjustment of status filing charts, we see that for employment-based preference filings, we now have to look at final action dates chart, and that is table A. So let's see table A. Final action dates, again, I'm going to go back here. Final action dates, that's what we have to look at. And when we see what happens with the second employment-based category, what we see is that all countries have retrogressed to July 1st, 2022. So July, August, September, October, November, December. So five months of retrogression that we are seeing because now we have to look at table A and table A has gone backwards. This is what, what we call retrogression. And it's something that we we don't really want to see, we never want to see, and especially now that many people were looking month, uh, month in and month out to see if there was a movement, now what they are going to find out is that dates are going backwards instead of moving forward. Okay, so that's absolutely uh, something that, that I wish I, I didn't have to to tell you. For EB1, um, we see a very uh, similar situation than for the previous months. We see current for all countries and a little bit of retrogression for China and India that go back um, a couple of months backwards. So February, March, April, May, June. So again, well, it's also five months. So similar situation for EB1 and EB2. Those countries that were already not current go backwards five months. And that is really unfortunate. And what this means uh, for you is that um, if you are thinking about applying for EB1 or EB1 in China or India or EB2 NIW, for example, for any country, you cannot file a concurrent filing of I-140 and adjustment of status. You do have to wait until the lines move, until more visas are available, and these charts show dates that are either well, dates that are current, if you want to do it concurrently, or at least that these dates advance. So people that were that had filed their I-140 recently, they can go ahead and file an adjustment of status. So what we are seeing is a is an opposite trend. Things are going in in the opposite direction, and that may be because a lot of people are applying. Uh, in the recent months, we have seen a lot of interest on green cards like the eb 2 w A lot of applications are going into USCIS. A lot of adjustment of status and consular processing are being done. And that means that the USCIS and the Department of State are filling up all those visa numbers that Congress make available per year to um, these agencies. They don't have the power. These agencies, they don't have the power to grant more number of visas or, or green cards um, than what Congress has mandated, okay? So I was talking about adjustment of status. Of course, if you are in the bucket of people applying from abroad, your situation hasn't changed a lot yet because if you do go back to the visa bulletin, you would have to look at table B, dates for filing, and in that case, December 22 is still uh, shown there. It's not July, it's December, so that's a little bit better. So that means that people applying from abroad may be able to submit the documentation to the Nas National Visa Center to continue their process in their consulate of choice. But of course, you need to get the welcome letter before that and so on. If you want to um, watch more uh, about consular processing, I have a video about that that you can take a look at. And of course, for those of you who are interested in adjustment of status, you can also go to my video on adjustment of status and take a look at, at, at that. Okay, so that's it. I wish I had better news. Um, I do have some news on the on the website front. You can now follow my Instagram. Um, you, you can add me um, Oscar's Green Car in his Instagram. I just created that account. I will keep you posted of all this news like this visa bulletin that 
has been released just now and each month I will tell you about that. I will also tell you a little bit about EB2 and IW, about EB1, about those categories in which you can self-petition. So follow me there for a quicker communication between us. And of course, um, you can also visit my website, eb2niw.info, which is exclusively focused on EB2 and IW. I have a lot of free information there. And you can also download my successful I-140 petition, my adjustment of status package, my ebook. And I'm particularly proud of my EB2 NIW course, a course that has a lot of lectures in English and in Spanish, exclusive videos, well structured in seven modules. And you will learn everything you need to know to put together a very solid case a very solid EB2 and IW petition for yourself. I'm confident that if you are very serious about this do-it-yourself EB2 and IW petitioning, you should enroll in that course and you will get a lot of value out of it. So as usual, thank you for your comments that you will leave in, in this section here below. Thank you to the person that actually corrected me today. That's why I'm re-uploading this video. And as usual, thank you for your support, for subscribing, for sharing this channel, for joining me in Instagram. I will see you in the next video and I hope I will bring you much better news.